Another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to Hey now all, I'm Joey C, and I have the distinct honor of welcoming you to the premiere episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that encourages and helps you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. Now let's get started right away and welcome in the real reason that we've come together. And in terms of labels, our expert has warned so many that she could spend an entire episode just talking about them, and we're going to in another episode as we as we move forward here. She's a shaman, a healer, a psychic, a channel, a medium, an empath spiritual coach, so much more. I mean, really, we could talk about this for days. She is the spirit doctor. Kelly Sparta is here to help make sure that we don't blow ourselves up. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Joe. How are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> and that's true, right? Because we're going to learn stuff that could blow us up. Well, you're going to learn stuff that'll, that could blow you up. And it, you know, I'm going to tell you things that will help you try not to blow yourself up. But Real spiritual seekers almost inevitably blow themselves up a few times. <laughs> it's it's just sort of what we do. Okay. Well, that that's not terrifying at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Way to start the episode. I know, Joe. right? A, we should call this the, the <laughs> scary Ooh. spirit or something like that. All right. So on that perspective, let's start right out. I'm going to ask the question, why the spirit Sherpa? What does that mean? Well, a, a Sherpa is the guide that you uh, hire to carry your stuff up into the mountains and to show you the path up the mountains when you're when you're mountain climbing. And any spiritual journey is much like a mountain climb. Uh, and uh, as with any other spiritual journey, you're better off to have somebody who's been there before than to blindly, you know, stumble through the snow and try <laughs> not to die in the crevasse, right? So uh, that's where the Spirit Sherpa concept came from, was from the idea that it would be nice to have somebody who's been there before show you the way and maybe carry a little bit of the stuff on the journey for you. So what are we going to learn about in over the course of the show? All things spiritual is basically what it comes down to. So we're going to talk about the the spirit world, all things magical, all things that are energetically related in personal growth because one of the one of the secrets that nobody tells you about spiritual life is that if you don't have control over yourself you're not going to get very far in the energetic world and so we'll talk a little bit about that along the way as well and uh, we're going to talk about, you know, hints and tips for how not to blow yourself up and <laughs> hints and tips for what to do if you do blow yourself up and, and uh, you know, how to recover. <laughs> um, but, we're you know, we'll talk about elves. We'll talk about fairies. We'll talk about magic. We're going to talk about dead people and what happens and ghosts and, and you know, things that go bump in the night. And, you know, the um, uh, there's... Basically, anything anybody wants to know about the spiritual world, we're going to talk about. And the cool thing is that in these these episodes, you're going to get all of that sort of nugget of content. And then at the end, you're going to give them some opportunities to go deeper, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the thing about the spiritual world is that it is a buffet of entertainment, right? You know, when you first get into it, it's like super exciting. And you're like, Ooh, I want a little bit of this. And Ooh, how about some crystals? And how about some angels? And how about some, some, you know, tarot cards and whatever else we can find. Ooh, it, shiny right? things. Ooh, bright, shiny, right? <laughs> and we get all excited. And, and that's awesome. And you could spend years and I've seen people spend years. The average person spends about two years just sort of dipping their toe in the water in a bunch of different places before they figure out exactly where they want to go. And so I'm trying to in the in this podcast, I mean, we're going to do this every week, we're going to sit down once a week, we're going to spend 20, 25 minutes talking to you about all things bright and shiny, right. <laughs> and this will give you an opportunity to really condense your journey, so that you don't have to spend two years sort of mucking about in the bright and shiny before you figure out where you want to dive deep. This is going to save you from having to take 50 billion different two hour classes with different teachers all over the place, right. 
the, the goal of this is to really compress your journey. That's, that's really what I do in the world is I take people's spiritual journey and I compress it down into a more efficient, faster path because the world is too fast these days. We have to learn faster. And so this is going to give you an opportunity to do your bright, shiny search and then to drop in and, and decide, okay, I like this piece of the bright, shiny. How do I learn more about that? And when we talk at the beginning about the magical mojo, that's really what it's about, right? It's, it's figuring out where your place is in the world, what your groove is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there mm -hmm. are about 100,000 of us on the planet right now who are part of the planetary transformation team. We're the people who are evolving the planet. And if you're listening to this, you're likely part of them because my peeps tend to find me. <laughs> and Your tribe always knows where you my are. My <laughs> tribe knows where I am. And so the, the key here is that what you have to discover is what is your piece to do. We all feel like we have this massive mission, this massive thing that feels so big and so heavy. And, and it is big and heavy if you think you have to do the whole thing yourself. Right. But what you have to realize is that you're one small cog in a massive machine and you just have to figure out where you fit. What your bite size is. Exactly. Yeah. What your bite size is. And some people's bite size is going national and international and being massive. And, <laughs> and some people's bite size is just doing their own work yep. and, and letting that ripple out into the world. And that is just as powerful in a lot of ways as the person who goes big. Right. Yep. So everybody has a part to play, but if you don't know what your part is, it's very frustrating. And so hopefully in the process of sitting and going through all of these pieces, you'll discover what your part is. Very, very cool. Now you've said spiritual world or the spirit world a couple times. Yeah. Well, what exactly does that mean? How does it work? Yeah, well, so that that is a really amorphous term right. that applies to a plethora of things. Uh, it could mean interdimensional stuff. It could mean the astral plane. It could mean the Akashic records. It could mean, you know, talking to your spirit guides. It could mean talking to, the, to ghosts that have crossed over. It, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And it's sort of the catch all term for all things that aren't physical. Mm -hmm. So yes, the answer is yes, we're going to talk about all of it. All of it. Eventually. <laughs> Not today. Yeah, we've got a lot of work yeah, to do that. But eventually. <laughs> yes. So what's the real value for somebody who's not experienced that to start learning about it? So when you when you look into the spirit world, there's two things that, that really are the, the primary things that we get out of it. One is we get a sense of something larger than ourselves. We get a sense that there's more to life than just this. And somewhere in the back of our heads, we all have that question, is this all there is? And the answer is no, it isn't. There's a lot more than what you can see with your eyes. And the other thing that it gives us is it gives us a sense of wonder and a sense of feeling uh, empowered, right? Because once we learn how to navigate in those realms, we expand our ability to create in the world. The, the work that we do to prep ourselves to operate in the spiritual world empowers us in the physical world as well. And when you take those two pieces and you put them together, magic happens. Okay, how? <laughs> and speaking as a relative noob here i'm i'm the the surrogate for our listeners because i i i am in a similar situation i'm i'm dabbling i'm i'm looking at the bright and shiny so when i hear you say that my first question is how right <laughs> well and the the answer to that is um the answer to that is very long <laughs> So the shortened answer to that, as I try and put it together in my head really quickly, is that there's a pathway we have to take, and, and we're going to talk about that, but there's a pathway we have to take in order to master ourselves. Okay. And in mastering ourselves and in claiming our power, and that's really what we are doing as we master ourselves, uh, we, we learn to coalesce our own energy. 
And when you can coalesce your energy and when you can bring your attention down to a singular focus, which is harder and harder today. <laughs> when I started in this work 40 years ago, it was much easier. It is <laughs> miserably difficult today. <laughs> But when you can bring your attention down to a single focus and bring all of your power to bear behind that focus, and you've removed all of the limiting beliefs that you have that keep you from believing that you could do it, then you can literally create things out of nothing. It is things just show up. So example, uh, I had a uh, housemate who was moving in from California and she asked me to keep my eyes open for a dresser and a nightstand. And I said, okay, great. I didn't have a car, right? Didn't have a car. So how was I going to come up with a dresser and a nightstand for free somewhere, right? So I said, it's got to be close. Close enough that I can carry it in. Right. I live at 17. Number seven, down the street from my house, put out a dresser and a nightstand within a week of the request. And there was a guy standing on the other side of the road who I grabbed and held and yelled over and said, would you help me carry these in? It's about to rain. <laughs> so I got the dresser and the nightstand and someone to help me carry them in. So that's what we talk about when we say manifesting. Manifesting. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. So you're saying it's not just manifesting good luck or manifesting, you know, something nonspecific. You can manifest a specific dresser and nightstand. Dresser and nightstand. I was opening my very first spiritual store 20 years ago and I was renovating the store and I did not want to sand the floors. They needed to say, be sand and I didn't want to do it. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to do this. In my mind, I thought, oh, I'll ask my friend Nick if he'll do it for me, but I'm not doing it. They're going to get done without me doing it. Random guy walks by 10 minutes later, not, comes up to the door, says, what you doing? I said, I'm <laughs> renovating my store. Why? Creepy man. He said, I'm, you know, I'm a construction worker and I'm not working today and I'm bored. You want some help? I said, sure. I can't afford to pay you though. He said, no worries. I said, I could buy you lunch. He said, pizza would be great. Right? Now he, we get in the car, go to the Home Depot. He gets me the contractor discount rate on the sander, which saved me the exact cost of the pizza. And he <laughs> did the sanding. And two more days worth of work for me for free. For pizza. For pizza. <sighs> okay. That's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty great deal. And you manifested it. And I manifested it. That's remarkable. Wow. Okay. So when we talk about magic, we talk about manifesting. One of the things that we hear people talking about, and I think it relates, it's, it's a little bit of a transition from what we're saying here, but we talk about spirit. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the spiritual world, we're talking about a way of believing maybe but is spirit what is spirit itself like is it a capital s spirit or spirit is sort of a reference to all things that are non-physical okay so it's different than your soul your soul is what inhabits you in particular when your soul leaves your body it becomes a spirit right uh, and there are other things in the spirit world that have not been embodied. There are, uh, guides and, and guardians and angels and demons. And there's all kinds of things that exist on the, the spiritual, spiritual realm. Claim realm. Okay. Yeah. And, and there are also spirit like things. And I say spirit like because they are energetics that don't really have consciousness. Okay. But they feed on different energies. So if you have negative emotions running, they will latch onto you and feed off of you if, if there's something that feeds off of negative energy. And to enforce, to reinforce their, their food source, they will feed things into your energy that cause you to stay negative. So as long as you're negative, they're fed. Exactly. Right. So there are things like that, but they are, they're much less conscious and more like reptilian brain. You know, they're just, they're very instinctual, animalistic sort of um, mindset. So they don't really have a lot of consciousness, a lot of will. They're just there. Wow. 
All right. This is a lot. There's a lot to talk about. I told you we're going to be talking for a long time. We are. Okay. <laughs> and and we could we could probably spend another 10 minutes on this, but I do want to sort of transition us here a little bit yeah. and open up a, a segment that we thought would be cool to add to the show. Now, you get asked a lot of questions by a lot of different people about a lot of different things. Yeah. And what, what you said was it would be really cool if during the podcast I had an opportunity to answer some of these questions from either our listeners or people who have taken classes with you. Um, or people I've talked to. Just people you talk to on the street, right, uh, who, have, who have asked questions yeah. um, on, on the podcast, on the air. So yeah. uh, let's sort of transition to that. I, I think we could call it Ask Kelly. Sure. <laughs> It needs a name. There you go. All right. Ask Kelly. Works. Ask Kelly. And um, um, so, yeah, so this is our premiere episode. So we haven't put it out there to anyone. But right. again, you get asked this all the time. So do you have any questions that people have been asking you? Yeah. So um, I got asked a question. I was actually at a business networking event uh, this week. And uh, one of the guys there uh, took me aside and we were talking and he said, you know, he said, I'm, I'm really interested in this shamanic stuff, but I don't I don't think I'm very good at it. And I said, well, why do you, what makes you say that? And he said, well, I went to this shamanic weekend, this educational weekend, shamanic weekend, where we're supposed to learn about shamanic stuff. And uh, he said, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't drop in very deep. He said, I've, I just, I don't think I'm very good at it. I said, actually, the fact that you didn't drop in very deep says less about your ability and more about the safety of the container. Hmm. And he was like, what do you mean by that? Right. And I said, well, look, if you have a good sense of self-preservation and looking at him, I could tell he did. You will not in an unsafe container, allow yourself to dive very deep because your part of you is going to stay present in the container to make sure you're safe. Mm. Okay. If the container is not solid, you're not going very far. That's good self-preservation, right? It's when you have a nice solid container that you can dive really deep. That's the differential. It's not about you. It's about the container. And we started talking about the, the type of containers that, that are, uh, you know, there's a container that I as a shaman create a sacred circle, right? That creates a solid safe space that keeps things out that aren't meant to be there and invites in only the things that we want to work with in that space. And when you talk containers, you're talking an energetic sort of container that, that you're creating from your own power. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, in, in Wicca, they might refer to it as a sacred circle. You know, there's, there's lots of different things that it gets called, but it's basically a safe container is what you're creating, right? A barrier between in the energetic, between the work you're doing on the inside and everything outside. And then the, each individual person has their own container. That container is what is created from your life experience. So if you have never had a problem or a care in the world, your container will be rather shallow because containers are built by challenge and overcoming challenge. If you have had a very difficult life, in which you have had to overcome many challenges, your container will be much deeper and able to hold a lot more because you've had to build your strength to overcome the adversity you've experienced. That adversity may have cracked your mm -hmm. container and it may leak and it may be saggy in places, but it is bigger and it is far easier for you to learn how to do magic than someone who has never had challenges because they don't have the depth of the container. It's far easier to fix uh, and, and repair a container that has been cracked or shattered that's big and deep and, and use it than it is to grow a container in adulthood. Well, and I was just going to say is, can you repair Absolutely. Those sort of things. Because Absolutely. we know if, we, if we're talking about the emotional space, right? Mm -hmm. Emotional cracks and fractures and shattering, those are difficult to repair. Is the same true in an energetic perspective? So the emotional cracks are a direct reflection into the energetic. And so, yes, you can absolutely repair the energetic, but 
the, you have to do the emotional work in order to do that. And, and you saying they're difficult to repair. Well, sort of, <laughs> sort of. It's so I want to be clear, uh, when I, when I say this as a shaman, I don't do therapy. Right. Okay. So I don't work with active trauma. And I don't do the things that therapists do. Basically, what I, uh, a friend of mine likes to say that, um, we, we work with the wounded well, right? <laughs> so when I talk about doing this work, I'm talking about dealing with stories around, I'm not good enough. I'm not, you know, I can't be trusted with my power. I'm, I'm, you know, nobody cares about me. I'm not important. I'm not welcome. I'm not wanted. These, these are the emotional stories that we address, right? And, the coping mechanisms and the control behaviors that come out of those. So those can be addressed in a shamanic path. And those are regularly addressed in a shamanic path. And yes, they can be repaired and they can be repaired very solidly. And once you walk through that, you have a super solid container because you have been places that you needed to go in order to heal those cracks. So it sounds like when you're doing that, that work, that transformational work, it's a lot about self-worth mm -hmm. and confidence. A lot about confidence, a lot about self-worth, um, but more about self-love, oh, right? Okay. So it's, it's confidence in your ability. And, and so it's competence, confidence in your competence, <laughs> and then love for yourself. Yeah. Right. Because if you are simply competent, but you do not have love for yourself, you will annihilate yourself in the process because you will put your, you will sacrifice yourself for, for someone else or something else, or just because you think it's a, your, your ego says it's a good way for you to mean something in the world. Yeah. Right. But if you have self love and no confidence, then you're not going to do anything. Because you're going to say, well, the safest thing for me to do is to sit here and be still. And if you have no self-love and no self-confidence, then you sit still because you don't think you can manage it. And you yell at yourself for doing nothing. Right? So I want to bring it back to the question you got from uh, the gentleman at the at the networking thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you kind of laid it out for him and said, look, this isn't so much about you. This is about the container you were in that Correct. was set for you. That wasn't, you didn't feel safe in it. Was it that he didn't feel safe in the container because container wasn't safe enough? Or could it have been some comfort in himself as well in his ability to feel safe? So one of the things that I do as people tell me about situations is that I feel into the energetic of what they're telling me. Yep. And what I got was that it was the container. It was the that container. Was unsafe. Yeah. Okay. We have talked about a lot in the last 20 some odd minutes here. Yeah. We've, we've gone Kind of into, gone all over the place. Yeah. We've gone into spirit. We've talked a little bit about energetics. We've talked about, um, sort of the transformational journey that you're taking people on as a shaman. And we're going to talk about more about that particular, uh, aspect of it in the next episode. And then we talked about containers and why don't you take a couple minutes now? If there's anything you want to kind of give the listeners, sort of whether it's homework, whether it's opportunities, whether it's stuff for them to to think about. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I want to mention is that uh, oftentimes the people who come to these types of classes and do these types of programs are people who have had challenged childhood environments. And so you have a great container to work with, which is awesome. It's a good starting point. But you also are probably an empath. Mm -hmm. And that means that, that you feel what other people feel. You have a hard time getting out of relationships. You're codependent, uh, both emotionally and energetically. And you, uh, you may be accused of being intimidating when you're not doing anything. You know every person who comes and goes from a room and you know exactly how they're feeling at all times. You, almost never know how you're feeling in the co <laughs> in the presence of someone else's strong emotions and large groups make you crazy. So if that sounds like you, then you are an empath <laughs> and uh, there is an energetic associated with an empath. And uh, I, I'm going to give you something that is going to change your life. I can't give it to you in under two minutes. So instead I'm going to give you free access to the class because you came onto the podcast today. Oh, cool. So what you have to do is you have to go to my website, 
which is kellysparta.com. And it's K-E-L-L-E. Sparta, like the Greek city state, S-P-A-R-T-A. This Kelly is Sparta. Sparta. I am Sparta. <laughs> right. Kellysparta.com. And then you click on the online programs button. And that will take you to my program site. And, and the very first thing there is Boundaries for Empaths. If you click on that and you use the coupon code BEFREE, B-E-F-R-E-E, BEFREE, that $30 class is yours for free. Wow. Okay. That's going to give you a seven-minute audio and a PDF transcription of that audio that will change your life. And then there's a 45-minute coaching call that I have recorded specifically around that class as well. That's also in that program. I promise you, you will not regret listening to that audio and listening to the coaching call. It will change the way you see yourself. So all of this is online. So when they yep. listen to this episode and they, and they get that coupon code, be free, B E F R E E, they can log into kellysparta.com. Go, go to the in, online programs. Go to the online programs and they can take it whenever they want to. Anytime. Okay. That's a pretty Coupon good deal. Coupon code's good forever. That's pretty fantastical. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, folks. <laughs> Not only are you getting information, you're also getting some tools that are going to help you. Yeah. Because there, is, there are so many people who are, and I don't know how to call it other than struggling empaths, because they don't realize why they hurt so much. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. Really I actually good. included that recording in a program that I sold years ago for $700. And one of the women who came through the program called me up afterwards and said, this seven minutes was worth every penny of the $700 that I spent on the program. So when I tell you it'll change your life, I am not kidding. Wow. This is going to be exciting. Yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be no... No holds barred. No. no (laughs) (laughs) Knowing you, that's probably true in a lot of ways. (laughs) Very true. true. But it will certainly be no lack of content. That's for sure. We're going to have lots of stuff to talk about. We're going to fill every episode. All right. So I don't want to stop, but we've got to stop. (laughs) We've got to stop because... We'll do another episode. We'll do another episode. Okay. (laughs) All right. All right, folks. That's all we have for this week. But be sure to join us next time as we delve even further, even deeper into the magical world. I'm Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. Bye, guys. Have a good one. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Each mile I travel over 13,000 now, so I leave behind a little bit. Spirit Trippa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at kellysparta.com to sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Sherpa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions.